Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we'll have a look at the latest from the GFS, the GM, the Eastern Earth and then we'll finish up with the GFS Ensembles and the UK Met Office run as well. Now over the last week or two we have been looking at the potential for a colder second half of November. However, it's pretty typical um, whenever we, we do start to see these longer term hints, they stay in the longer term. That is what we are still seeing. So definitely does like we're going to be seeing a sort of a pest from the west pattern, which is basically the opposite from uh, the beast from the east. Basically, we're just going to be seeing westerly winds. Um, the westerly winds will be flattening. Uh, at least in the shorter time frame, 7 to 10 day time frame, we'll be flattening any ridges, um, and that's what we are going to be seeing. So I'll show you the latest year first, and we'll have a look at the ensembles as well, uh, and I'll say why uh, we're seeing um, this sort of flattening pattern happening. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe, and remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. So we do have a look at the latest year first, you can see we do generally have westerly winds. Now we have low pressure moving through at the moment, however... By sort of midday Saturday, we're actually going to have higher pressure building over the top of the UK. But you can see more westerly winds are going to be moving in by early next week. And although it's generally going to be high pressure to the south, low pressure to the north, it is again westerly winds. Now, the potential we do see in sort of eight, nine days' time, a brief northerly wind. Now, very, very, very brief. Um, and if you have a look at the 850 HP temperatures, maybe touching minus five across the far north. But as we'll have a look at the ensembles in a minute, nothing majorly cold. And beyond that, westerly winds come back in once again. Now, we do start to see a bit of a build of higher pressure towards Scandinavia. But this is going to bring in southerly winds and more of a balmy sort of outlook with um, warmer air coming in from the south. We'll be unsettled in the west. However, it will be generally um, dry in the east, but quite mild as well. With weather fronts trying to approaching in, high pressure blocking out. Now, this sort of wet, uh, sort of pattern is very, very interesting because, as you saw there with the upper air temperatures, there is a massive cold pull towards Eastern Europe and Russia. Now, this does mean if we did start to pull in an easterly wind, if this high pressure did get going, we would go very, very cold. However, as you can see towards Greenland and northern Canada, there is a lot of purples indicative of very low pressure um, and the tropospheric polar vortex, which will probably... Um, and I only say probably because it could happen, very, very low probability though, that the high pressure wins out against this big lobe of tropospheric polar vortex. This high pressure towards Scandinavia winds and veers those winds into an easterly direction, but I highly doubt it. And again, this is right at the end of the run. But for the majority of this run, so the first 10 to 12 days, things are westerly winds. Um, as I said, pests from the west, not allowing really any other sort of weather patterns moving through. The potential for high pressure towards the end of the run, but again, that is longer term, as we've seen over the last week or so, because we've seen sort of consistent cold patterns on the uh, longer term, it doesn't quite come off. So we do now have a look at the GM, see how that does compare, because again, westerly winds, high pressure building in towards this weekend, early next week, and then generally just flat westerly winds, and right towards 240 hours, a little bit of blocking to the north, but we are generally in from a flat westerly wind. And it does mean to the north that we do see a bit of colder air sitting down. The jet stream does shift a bit further southwards. We could be seeing colder conditions for the north. Over hills, we could see a little bit of wintriness here or there. And generally, it's just going to be cold rain, though, for many. But in the south, we, if we are on the warmer side of the jet stream, like on this GEM run, you can see potentially the, the 10 degree isotherm is moving in, which is pretty mild indeed for this time of year. Um, and that's pretty typical for this westerly pattern. Again, it can change. We can see this sort of pattern disintegrate, but this is what we've been seeing over the last few days with the cold run slowly disintegrating out of the sort of 10 to 12 day um, time frame. Uh, and as we'll see in the ensembles in a minute, um, it really is only right at the end we're seeing anything cold, but that's not too abnormal for this time of year, uh, regardless of what the shorter term pattern is. So if you do have a look at the ECWF, you can see it again. Westerly winds, high pressure does build in towards early this week, but it does maintain fairly westerly winds. We do see right towards the end a bit of application, a bit of a diving low and some cold air pushing in very, very briefly just to our north. Could be a bit of snow mixed in with that, but that is right towards day 10, very uncertain time frame. And generally things are looking westerly over the next week to 10 days. 
One good thing, though, because um, sometimes when we have a very westerly pattern, we get very stormy conditions, but we're not seeing that as the high pressure to our south is significantly strong enough that it's keeping the jet stream sort of over the top of the UK instead of sort of powering up and amplifying, getting big lows developing. Because um, amplifying not only could bring colder conditions, but amplifying in the correct way, bringing milder air into so into colder air that's where we see low pressures spin up little kinks in the jet stream um but it is a flat westerly pattern which means it's just going to generally be drier in the south wetter in the north uh, but not exclusively um generally colder in the north um and warmer in the south um, but generally most areas will be milder than average if we have a look at the gfs ensembles if we firstly have a look at london 12Z run hasn't quite fully come out. It's gone out to 11 days, and you can generally see we are well above average for the next 11 days. There was the chance of seeing a little bit of northerly winds um, next week in about six, seven days' time, and you can see the majority are going colder, but not majorly colder by any means, just getting down to average again before returning well above average. And then in the longer term, you can see generally things are around or just a touch above average. At, at, at above average. And in the south, it is generally quite dry. Um, with quite minimal precipitation. If we go back to the 6Z run, you can see again, very mild westerly for the next 10 days plus. Beyond that, of course, you see the classic colder runs coming in around day 14, and there is not that much support for them anymore. We're not seeing the operational run go for it, and it really is only maybe three, four uh, ensemble members, and they all are sort of 12, 14 day time frame. Whereas a few days ago, we were seeing around the 10 day time frame, which is a bit more feasible and a bit more interesting. But at this stage, they are just outliers. Um, so at least until the 23rd, maybe 24th of November, it is looking generally um mild um unsettled in the north and just westerly winds dominating beyond that there is still the chance we could see something a bit colder but we're not seeing any hints of any amplification in the shorter time frame at this stage um so it would be unusual to go from just flat westerly to big blocking or anything um normally it is more of a um sort of there's a bit more of a transition um over a sort of a week or a few days at least so it's unlikely we see anything massively cold now for the end of november but it's not out of the question so don't lose all hope i guess so if you have a look at what is happening in glasgow firstly on the 12 side you can see generally things are around or above average we are sort of hinting a little bit below average um for at a few spots but of course average for glasgow is a degree or two colder than it is for london so even though they're both above average glasgow is going to be a little bit colder and generally the north is going to be a little bit colder than many parts further south you can see there is more precipitation no massive spikes no massive no massive deluges because of course these lows are not massively strong they're not amazingly deep but they are still low pressure so still weather fronts and showers moving in if we do have a look at the 6z to see what we see beyond that you can see generally temperatures are around or maybe a touch below average but it's nothing amazing there is a lot of offset by some very cold outliers um, but there are some more very mild outliers as well and there is quite a lot of precipitation around so generally things are still looking like low pressure dominated so no real definitive signal for the end of november yet um we were here to get cold weather over the last week that has diminished um, simply because we are seeing a lot of westerly winds over the next week to 10 days and it's unlikely we will flip that quickly but you never know um, just at least for the next 7 to 10 days it is looking like we're going to be seeing a pest from the west pattern with just sort of consistent westerly winds um, there's really no respite really we'll see a brief high pressure like this weekend um, but still um, it does look like westerly winds will topple that very quickly now, if we finally have a look at the UK Met Office run, you can see um, this evening we still have a few showers moving in, a bit of drizzly rain and some heavier rain at times. Tomorrow, things are looking a lot drier, generally a few showers in the east with that high pressure building and giving us a little bit of an easterly breeze before westerly winds do move back in for Sunday and weather fronts moving in. Um, generally quite cloudy, showery in the north. Um, further southwards, nothing too much. There could be a bit of snow showers over the hills as we do have some cold air sinking southwards as Scotland is on the colder side of the jet stream. But nothing too amazing um, in general. Things just generally looking dry in the south, a little bit um, more unsettled in the north, and generally mild and westerly. Now, if we have a look at the max temperatures, you can see 
Today we saw temperatures around 14, 15 degrees and only around 7, 8 degrees in Scotland. Tomorrow temperatures will be rising to around 12, 13 degrees, so not massively warm or mild, but it's warmer than average, let's say, or a, a couple degrees above average. If we do have a look at Sunday, you can see temperatures in the afternoon around 11, 12 degrees, maybe only 7, 8 across Scotland. So even though both areas are above average, um, Scotland is going to be maybe a degree or above average, whereas England and Wales may be a degree or two, um, but still will be pretty chilly in Scotland around 7 or 8 degrees. For Monday, temperatures are around maybe only 9, 10 or 11 degrees, actually. It's a little bit chillier in the south and chillier in the north as well. Of course, we've probably got a colder air mass moving through by then. Um... Maybe a colder night, maybe only 5 or 6 degrees. But by Tuesday afternoon, once again, 10, 11 degrees possible and only 6, 7 degrees across Scotland. Uh, potentially an overnight frost maybe in a few areas. Uh, for early on Wednesday, as we do have colder air mass further northwards. But as you can see, nothing much is happening. Not really exceptionally mild temperatures, not exceptionally cold temperatures. Generally around to above average temperatures uh, for many. Um, maybe a few um Colder nights, especially for the Norfords, and that could lead to frosts and maybe some wintry showers over the hills. But that's really not abnormal for this time of year. So it does look like the snow and cold risk we have been following over the last few days, the last week or so, is now starting to diminish. It's always going to happen in winter. We are going to see these sort of false um, models come out where suddenly all the models are showing uh, a lot of support for a cold northerly wind at day 10 and then give it a couple of days and it's completely disintegrated. But the opposite can happen. In a week's time, we could be talking about a very, very cold end, to no end of November, start to December. Um, so we'll really just have to keep an eye re on what happens. Um, as ever, this time of year, things can flip very, very quickly. Um, so just keep your eyes peeled um, out uh, on, for the videos and Met Office warnings uh, and their forecast as well. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed subscribing. And I'll see you again for another video soon.